G'day. Today I'm making up one of the scarier looking parts, uh, this thing. Um, because, well, I got to it and I thought I've, I've, I've got to make that bit. Um, so I have. Uh, it's a mixture of a bit of welding, and which is optional, uh, and machining and filing and all that sort of thing. Um, this part is what's well, what's well, that's close enough to 70 plus 10 so that's 80 high and that's 51 wide now i haven't got any angle that size uh in fact i i, I looked around for some 100 by 100 and i couldn't find any of that here so what i've done is i've got a bit of uh, it's actually 55 by 55 but it'll do uh, and i'm going to weld a piece of six flat on there and that will give me a piece basically 100 by 55 so I can I can machine that down this is a used piece from somewhere uh, I don't need, can't remember exactly where there is one hole that's going to be in the way so I've gone and, and countersunk that and I'll put a put a block of aluminium or something behind that fill that up with some some weld flip it over do the same on the other side and that way I can I can fill that up um, and uh, uh, you know you won't notice but uh, as a first step yeah, weld that onto there, and uh, I'll probably just use stick for that. Uh, fill that hole, and then I can come back when that's cool and start cutting things out. To join this banjo onto the uh, the supporting bracket, there's some other interesting bolts. These slots are uh, are six wide, and on the bracket there's some square holes, and they're also uh, six millimeter square. Well, nominally. Um, and then there's some nuts on the back of that to, to tighten everything up. Now, the drawing calls for, and uh, that's it there, the drawing calls for uh, diameter 6, M6, and A, well, the drawing's got quarter uh, AF, but it's actually 6mm um, AF. And then there's some grooves in between to separate. Now, that's six, that's six, and that's the balance. I'm gonna actually make it without these uh, grooves in there, partly because it's extra fiddliness, but it's also, I don't have a one millimeter um, you know, grooving cutter. I wonder I'll have to get one. The reason they're there is so that the, the plate which the, the, the banjo plate is six millimeters thick so that takes you halfway to that groove and then you've got the square section and then that takes you through to the back of the bracket which is also the, is, is normally six thick so what I've done is I've actually made that section there six and a half so I've taken it right to there and I've made this back here to about eleven and a half and so you can get away without those grooves. Now, I've actually done this on a bit of stock here. I've used uh, three eighths, uh, sorry, five eighths, which is uh, 15.88 rather than 16. That doesn't matter. Um, that's, that's hanging in free space. So I've done it six, eight and a half, which is what the, the um, you know, uh, corner to corner measurement is for uh, six mil square, and then put on the, uh, the M6 thread. I'm now gonna take this to the mill and square that up. Because I need two, I've done both ends of the rod. And uh, then once I've done that, I'll come back and I'll part them off. And I should, fingers crossed, have my, uh, my trick bolts that will locate in, uh, in here. I now need to put the squares on there. So um, there are several ways I could do this. I could put it up in a, in a dividing head or something like that and be very precise about it. Uh, if you've got one of those square collet blocks, you could use one of those. If you've got a, a hexagonal one with my funny little adapter, you could use that too. But um, the simplest way is, is probably just to run the cutter across that, take that down to, to where it needs to be, and then turn it around 90 degrees, square it up the square, and off we go. Now, two of the, that's how to, how to put this. Two parallel sides are critical. The other two aren't quite so much. Um, and I'll explain that when we come to, to put it together. But, you know, you basically want a six millimeter square section there. So 
as well as you can, um, but because you're going to be filing out some square holes for this thing to go into, if it's not quite square, well, I won't tell anybody you fold them out crooked. Here's my first funny bolt. Uh, I've parted it off, given a bit of a, a, a polish up. Uh, I probably could put it in a forger if I wanted to really uh, clean things up, but uh, that's all right. A bit of, bit of emery on the top there is, is uh, good enough to remove the party marks. That actually ended up 5.95 or thereabouts rather than 6, and the reason for that is the curvature of this slot. Okay, If you looked at the geometry there, while it might be six across, because of that curvature is actually a little bit less um, on, the, on the corners of the square here. So this has got to go through. The round piece runs in that slot. The square piece sits, on, uh, sits in the clamping bracket. And so you can see that that will move up and down that locks into the, the, the square hole on the, on the, uh, the bracket and then a nut goes on there to, to, to pull that all up. So this is how you're adjusting the, the, the tip angle but yes the, the square does need to be uh, a little bit undersized and I would suggest keeping the, um, the nuts on your bar stock and test fitting them making sure they go in uh, before parting off because once you do that uh, it's going to be very difficult to come up and touch them up with a file. I'm just about to start uh, marking out the bases of the holes for my um, uh, bracket here. Now, this is a bit of 55 angle. Um, I've taken that down to 51. I've also squared up the end. Um, fortunately for me, the, the piece of material, sort of the cut, sloped away. So I was able to get clean up there without having to uh, run into this. But you could come along with an angle grinder or something and just clean that up so you had enough room to get a... Um, a clean up cut there. All I'm doing there is making sure that that one and that one are at uh, 90 degrees to each other and um, because it was clamped down on this one to do that that should be 90 degrees as well. So now it's just a matter of marking out the holes. These are the two important holes. Uh, these ones here are important but they're um, independent to a degree of, of these ones. That one and that one actually coexist on the same um, you know, place from the datum, but if there's a slight variation there, I don't think it's going to matter uh, enormously. Once I've got those holes marked out, I can then put the profile in, uh, mark on my my radii, and cut that out. I've marked my hole positions here on the on the rear of the piece. Uh, now, some of you may know this, but if you've got a sharp punch and you've got decently scribed lines, you can actually feel where the where the lines intersect. And so I've gone in there, I've put a centre punch mark in there. I've then come along with my small dividers and done the R10 circle. Right? Now that is an R50 and normally I'd just look around for a, a tin or something about that right size to, to describe that but I can't find one. So these holes sit on an R60 radius. So what I'm going to do is basically, because I'm lucky and I've just got enough material there, I'm going to locate that there, centre pop that, adjust this back to 50 and that should allow me to swing an arc between those to give me where I'm meant to be going. I've roughed out this bracket with an angle grinder, uh, trimmed it within a couple of the millimetres of the lines. Now if you're using a file to do this you know what happens next. Uh, if you're like me and just going to use the mill to clean up those edges, what I'm doing is I'm doing the trick of putting a, a, a parallel there and then using that to line up in the vise. Uh, so that I get a, a cut that's that's parallel. I need to trim off this one and that one. Um, this one uh, I'll get to in a moment. There is a cutout that, that goes in here. Um, that gets cut away at, I can't remember what the angle is, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a standard angle. Um, and so I'm going to actually leave that for the moment because I'd like to have two parallel sides here in case I need it to, to hold anything. Worth noting too with this bracket, none of these edges are actually critical. Uh, the critical part of these holes, and they're not quite as critical as you might think, and the, to the two holes that are going to go down here, they are critical. Um, so, you know, even if you're a little bit off in, in some of your, um, your machinings or markings or filings or whatever, 
it's not going to matter. As long as you've got enough meat around these holes and these holes are properly placed, you'll be fine. I'm about to set up to cut this curve. Now, since you last saw it, I came in with a cutter and I just freehand that with the mill. And you could actually do that. Um, you just need to make sure that there's enough drag on your table so that you don't have a, the cutter trying to work uh, to climb. Um, but you can come in and you can do that. I'm going to go for something a little bit neater, mainly because it gives me a chance to, to try out this technique. These two holes are based on a centre up here. And I could have left that on the, on the piece of plate, um, but I didn't. What instead I've done, I've got this bit of sc scrap clamped here because these two are 60 degrees apart. Now, from your basic geometry, you know that 60 degrees is an uh, isosceles, sorry, an equilateral triangle. So I can set my dividers based on these two centers, and then I can come up and swing arcs based on those right and get a center point for that so there's the center point of the, this arc i can now put a boring head up there and adjust that out to clean that up now i could actually set that up to get the distance spot on at, at uh, a 50 millimeter radius i'm not going to bother uh, i'm just going to eyeball that into that line and uh, just sort of smooth that out then i need to all i need to worry about is doing these Here we are about to get to the exciting part now in solidarity for those brothers without a mill and a rotary table i did actually file the uh, the profile here so that was done with the the boring head and then i came around and, and, and filed that i guess the uh, the trick with a lot of this stuff is to get as close as you can with your angle grinder or whatever before you know filing the last bit i also did this bit uh, this is a uh, an R25 based around that center and this line is just tangent to that so that wasn't difficult. Now that's the center pivot hole and that's a diameter 8. This one here is tapped M8 on the drawing but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make that 3 for the moment and you'll see why. These two are 6 square and so I'll start those off with, a, with an M3 then go to a 6 and then I'll have to um, sadly bite the bullet and actually file those out to square. Um, the difference between a rounded hole and a, and a square hole and an M6 isn't much, so that shouldn't take long. Uh, it's more finding a file to fit. Um, they don't have to be, uh, should we say, exactly right, because the, uh, the bolt that goes in them if the sides aren't quite vertical, that that'll, that'll it'll just pivot. That's okay. And the other thing is that if these the, if the center distance is slightly off, it just means that the, the the banjo that sits on top here is going to be slightly off. I mean, you still have two holes to locate, so don't get too fussed about you know can I do these accurately enough? It doesn't uh, it doesn't need it. Um, I mean, it's nice if you can, but if you if you do you know find that your hold is slightly off where it should be, it's not the end of the world. Filing time again. I've marked out the uh, where the holes need to be. Uh, you two two ways you could do this. You could come off the bottom with a square and just pick up the tension of those those six millimeter holes, or you could do as I've done and just set that up with a height gauge and and scribe the appropriate marks in the in the right spots, measuring from things, you know, hole center plus or minus three millimeters. I've got a piece of th of uh, six millimeter key still here, and I'm going to use that as my um, I guess my check. Uh, fixture. So file the corners out, try the uh, try the bit of key steel and uh, once that fits you know basically leave it alone. I filed out the um, the holes here with a with uh, a file. I, I found I did have a, a full size um, square file although it's a, a, a finish one. However these things, the, the corners by necessity have got a slight round on them. So what I what I usually do is I do get a needle file, this is a triangular one, and I'll work that in the corners just to relieve those and make sure that um, there's no material hanging up in there that will, uh, you know, cause the, um, the square not to go in there. These are the funny 
square shanked bolts that were made up earlier uh, and as you can see that goes through the the uh, the slot in the I'm calling it a banjo uh, you can call it a quadrant if you like I guess um, so this slot runs on the round part there and then the square here locates in here so that it doesn't rotate and that means you can put something like a, a, a wing nut or a hex nut on there and not have to worry about having a head on this side to, to, to grab onto so it's quite a neat little design as you can see that gives you that movement around the, the radius which uh, the, the, the center point which is about there somewhere so I find that really exciting that needs to be worked a bit just to, to wear burrs off and, and all that sort of thing but uh, there it is here on the original there's a, uh, a modified m8 bolt with a spacer and then the bottom of the bolt is turned down and it acts as a stop here now this is this is what tool makers do all right tool makers make things by bolting things together welders make things by joining things together i'm not either, and so I do a bit of both. And from my production days, um, I can say, well, that's nice, but I've got three parts there. I could get away, that, that are disassemblable, I could get away with, uh, with one. So this is what I've done. I've put a bush here, and I'm gonna drill that out and ream that for a dowel, and put a dowel in there. And that way the dowel can go through. I don't have to worry about modifying a bolt. I don't have to make, worry about making up a spacer. Uh, I've just got to get a dowel, put that in there, and everything is uh, pretty much done. Here it is, the bracket for uh, the quadrant, banjo, whatever to swing on, uh, complete with my uh, bush here that I've welded on. I did that by tapping that bush M3, and then with the M3 hole, or the, the, the diameter three hole there, put a, put a screw through, welded that up, uh, and, Later on I'll drill that out for, for a dowel. Uh, I'm going to leave that for the moment just in case I want a smaller hole so I can spot through onto the other part just to check my position. Uh, but other than that I think I'm good. So, you know, there's another another major part and, and uh, you know, a rather complicated looking one when you look at it, but uh, actually it's quite simple to make. Um, so thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you for the next one.